So I'm making this video to show you how you can use your smartphone or tablet to visualize uh, bat echolocation calls from a bat detector. Uh, the bat detector I'm using in the demo is a bat box duet. Um, this should work equally well with other bat detectors, um, but this is just the one that I've been uh, testing out on. So in order to connect uh, my phone to my detector, there's a couple of things you need to know. Um, the first is that with this bat detector we've got two channels of audio coming out. So we've got a left channel and a right channel. And we're interested in the left channel, which is the frequency division. So a smartphone uh, can't sample audio at a very high rate. So that means that it cannot record ultrasound directly. Uh, but because the bat detector is using frequency division, uh, the audio frequency that's coming out is, is within the, um, the, uh, the sampling rate of my smartphone. So I use one of these. This is a um, stereo to mono converter. So stereo comes in this side, and then it splits the, the left and right channel to two uh, mono uh, ports here. Um, I stuck a little bit of tape on the left channel, so I know which one that is. Um, and that goes in here. So now what's coming out of this side is just the frequency division output that I want. Um, from the uh, smartphone end of things, um, we're going to use the uh, microphone capabilities of the headphone socket here. And this is expecting a, uh, a microphone that you might get on the, on the lapel part of your, of your headphones. Um, so it's expecting to send power to that microphone. Now this, uh, the Batbox Duet and uh, most, all, all bat sectors are powered. Um, so in order to get over that mismatch, we're going to use uh, this cable. Um, this takes the, uh, uh, the headphone jack that goes into a, a smartphone or tablet, which has the microphone and the left and right audio channels in it. And it splits it into a, uh, the microphone component and the audio uh, component. Uh, this cable also has an attenuation uh, bit of gear in it, which stops the, um, stops the, the, the power that the phone is trying to send to the microphone. And that's key. Um, there's a link to this and all the other bits of cable in the uh, description below. So this goes into our uh, phone. Um, and then all we need to do is connect these two up. Um, so I've just got a, a standard stereo jack-to-jack -jack cable. This works. Um, you can also get little connectors, which are basically just, just this sort of bit up here. Um, again, uh, links in the description below. So this goes into the green bit here, and this comes into the left channel. Like that. Um, now there's a few different uh, apps you can use. Um, there's loads of apps out there, and I'd recommend that you go away and have a look and see which one which one works best for you. Um, this is an iPhone 4S. Uh, and the one I found is best for this is um, Spectrum View. Uh, Spectrum View has a both a free and a paid for version. The paid for version is about five pounds, I think, um, but the free version's got a whole bunch of functionality as well. Um, so the version I've got here is the Pro version. Um, and as you can see, we've got a um, we've got our spectrum uh, coming through. And if I produce ultrasound here with my fingers, you can see that's coming through real easy. Um, I'll show you a more detailed view of that uh, in a moment. So that's working with the uh, iPhone 4S. So now I'm going to show you with uh, an iPad Mini. Uh, this is obviously a lot better because it's got a much bigger screen. Um, it's much easier to see. So I'm going to open up Spectrum View here and uh, get Spectrum View running. Uh, so here it goes. Um, you'll see it's running a lot slower than it was on my iPhone. I'll show you how you can change that later. I'm going to plug in the uh, bat detector and now you'll see once again we've got the old sound coming through. So that's the setup here is exactly the same as the iPhone. So now I'm going to show you the Motorola G. Uh, so this is, a, this is an Android phone. Uh, obviously the previous two were Apple. And the app you're going to use here is slightly different. It's called uh, Spectral View. The app we used on the Apple devices is called Spectrum View. Again, links below. Um, this one also has a, a premium and a, and a free version. Uh, what you see here is the output from the internal microphone on the phone. So this is just my voice. Again, with exactly the same cables, we just plug that into the headphone socket. Uh, this takes a couple of seconds just to register that we've got a new uh, input here. 
So now we've got the input coming in from the uh, batch detector. And if I twizzle my fingers, you can see that coming through. So now we're going to look at these apps in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to show you a uh, spectrum view here um, on my iPhone. Um, I've got the, uh, the Pro version on here, so it's got a few additional features. Um, this little button here lets you make the uh, screen bigger and smaller, which is quite handy. Um, if you get an interesting call at some point, you can just hit the pause button, um, and then you can investigate that. Um, you can expand the, uh, the y-axis here, the frequency spectrum. If you tap on the screen, it gives you a readout for, for that position, giving you the uh, kilohertz, out you with your species ID. Um, you can also look at the, uh, the spectrum analyzer. So this gives you a uh, frequency spectrum. So you've got the frequency range along here, and amplitude up the side. So you can also uh, record things you hear on here as well. So if we go to the recording tab, we can hit record, and that will start recording. Um, oh, turn my detector off there. Um, so we can record stuff coming through. Now once we've uh, we've captured what we want to, we just go back into recording and hit stop. And if we want to uh, see that again, we can just scroll down and hit play, and that'll uh, play back the recording that we had. So you can see here the me rustling my fingers together. Um, we can go into this uh, playback tab, and we could scroll to a certain time point we we're interested in. Uh, we can rename it, so here it's got a rather unimaginative name of recording number 5. Um, so we can rename that whatever we want to. Let's call that, uh, let's call that test. Um, and then it appears here in my, in my list of, uh, of saved recordings. So you can save a whole bunch of recordings onto your phone, obviously given your, the memory that you've got on your phone. Um, here's a, a 45 pip that I heard um, not long ago. So you can get some really some sort of decent recordings on here. Um, if you want to share your recordings, <coughs> you can go here into the playback uh, menu um, onto the recording that you've I'll just stop playing that. Uh, onto the recording you're interested in, and then you can share it by uploading it to SoundCloud. So if you've got a, a SoundCloud account, um, which I do, you just uh, uh, log in and then you can upload it. Um, so that's really nice for, for sharing stuff. Um, you can also uh, go further across, we've got more stuff here, we've got settings. This is where you can change things that uh, influence how quickly um, the spectrogram scales across. So you'll see mine was moving across pretty quickly there when we were recording, um, which isn't the default settings. Um, so the default settings ha have the sampling rate much lower. Uh, and when you do that, um, you'll see that the, the spectrogram comes across uh, a lot slower. Um, so I find having that, that sampling rate um, right up the top and that gives you a really fast uh, spectrum, uh, which, is, which is good. And you can change all sorts of other things here um, uh, to do with uh, visualization and all sorts. I'll let you, you can play with that. Um, also, with the with the playback menu, um, it's worth saying that you can uh, view stuff here in your uh, you can view stuff here that's in your in your uh, sort of saved folder for spectrum view. Um, but if you keep going back, you can also play stuff from your iTunes library. Um, so I could play. Uh, some Josh Groban here, um, and you'll see this in your in your visualization as well. Um, or you could uh, you can also go and you can play stuff directly from your SoundCloud as well. Um, so the top here, there's a, a Spectrum View library and SoundCloud library. So SoundCloud library will link into my SoundCloud, and you'll see I've got some other sort of calls on here, um, some Noctual stuff which I can then download. Uh, and then I can play this back. So this is quite good in the field um, if you want to sort of review stuff, um, review calls that you've heard against against the other stuff. Sorry, I was pressing the wrong button there. Um, so now that's going to appear in my uh, Spectrum View library. Uh, you'll see it's now appeared at the top, this Noctual call. Um, and you can see this call here. And you could you know, go and zoom in and compare this to a call that you just heard. So I think Spectrum View is a pretty good app. It's, uh, I'd say it's worth buying the premium version. It's only £5 something, you know, it's not too much money and I think it gives you uh, quite a lot of additional functionality. Um, quite a lot of the stuff I've shown you here uh, won't, be, won't be in the free version, but you know, by all means check out the free version uh, and, then, uh, and then decide for yourself whether or not you're going to pay for the premium one. 
So this is a spectral view on the Android phone, on the Moto G. Um, I've downloaded the Pro version which allows me to change a few things. Um, first of all, um, you get this uh, scrolling view um, by default. So when this gets to the end here, it's going to start again from the beginning. And we can change that by hitting the scroll button here at the bottom. Uh, and when we do that, then the image is going to continue pan across. So that's, that's a bit better. Um, also, you'll see the rate at which it's moving is quite slow. So if you've got back calls, they're all going to be really bunched up. Um, so we can modify that as well. So if we go into the options, um, we want up the frequency to the maximum value we can get. Um, and we also want to update uh, here. We want to change the set update speed. We want to set that to the maximum as well. Um, it still doesn't go as fast as it does in Spectrum View, um, but it's a lot better than the default. Um, it's got a cool functionality which spe uh, Spectrum View doesn't have on the Apple, which is this max value. Um, so this is showing us the uh, peak frequency, which is clearly really handy for uh, back call identification. Um, I've not used this out in the field yet, but um, I imagine that's a pretty cool feature to have. Um, the other thing we can do in here is to save the picture. So if we had a back call, we wanted to save it, um, we can save that spectrogram here. So unfortunately this doesn't have the ability to record like Spectrum View does, it doesn't have the ability to share um, on uh, SoundCloud uh, that Spectrum View does, but it's, it's still pretty good, um, pretty nice visualization tool with this uh, peak frequency feature here is, is pretty nice. Um, so that's uh, pretty much all for Spectral View, um, feel free to download it and uh, have a play. So in terms of cost, this setup is uh, pretty cheap. Um, this cable here costs about £9. The stereo to mono adapter uh, costs about £3. And the uh, jack to jack table you can pick up for around £5. Um, the premium apps were around about £5 too. Uh, so in total, my setup came to around £25 to £30 once I bought all the cables, the premium app, and paid for post.